Welcome to the City Impact Church podcast. Join us weekly to listen to sermons from our Sunday services or our special events. For more information, visit cityimpactchurch.com or find us on our Facebook page. We pray you'll be inspired and challenged by this week's message. Look at your neighbor and say, all right, all right, all right. Come on, look at your other neighbor and say, you in trouble. It's going to be you in trouble. It's going to be a good night. Hey, can I ask you, let me ask you something, let me ask you something. Has anyone ever heard this before? I could sing of your love forever. You ever heard that before? That song has been in my head all day long. So I decided I should play it. And that way you guys can sing it. But I got a problem. I got a problem. It's probably not the way you used to hearing that song. Here's what happened. I got some friends in Detroit, Michigan, and and they black. And that song was written by a really cool white dude, all right? But my black friends got that song, and they, how do I, they blackicized it. <laughs> Somebody touch your neighbor and say, blackicize. Come on, touch your other neighbor and say, blackicize. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to play for you. I could sing of your love forever, blackicize. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got a little carried away. That's my bad. I, I, I shouldn't have done that last one. I thought they could do it, but no. 
Hey, if it's all right, hey, can I play the very first song I ever learned on the saxophone for you? Hopefully I don't play it like the first time I learned it on the saxophone. But it's one of my favorite songs. And if you know it, you got to help me, all right? Favorite song. I normally only do one song, but because pastor's wife's here, and I have to do two. And, and the guy got up and he says, y'all know it's the queen's birthday. So I looked at her and said, it's your birthday?
Everybody say, all right, all right, all right. Look at your neighbor and say, amazing grace. How many of you know it was amazing? Tonight, can I just, uh, can I give you, let me give you something, let me give you something. Here it is. Uh, the Bible says in Psalms chapter 34, verse 18, Psalms 34, 18, it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I'm going to give it to you one more time. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Hey, anybody here ever been brokenhearted? You ever have somebody let you down? You ever been crushed? See, a lot of times the world tells you that when you're brokenhearted, to get, get by yourself, push everybody away. But no, no, no. Jesus says, I'm going to be right there. See, he's there when we need him the most. There's a, the message. It's a different version of the Bible. Here's that same verse. It says this. If you are brokenhearted, you'll find God right there. Come on. If you're kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your next breath. I love that. Now, today I want to talk about that and open that up to you, but I want to do it in a little different way. Everybody in the room has a cell phone. Everybody got cell phone, cell phone, but you ain't going to believe what happened to my cell phone. My cell phone, the devil got a hold of it. Because one day I'm hanging out, I'm at home sitting there, and my phone starts ringing. And I look at it, and how many of you know it'll show the number? It'll tell you, and it might even tell you what city they're calling from. Uh uh, no, no, no. The number on this, it. Listen to me. It said, here's the phone number, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. Who in their right mind going to answer that phone? <laughs> I ain't going to do it. So I let it ring. It finally stopped ringing. It didn't ring again. I'm like, oh, I ain't doing that. So I blocked that number. <laughs> it rang again. You know it's the devil calling when you can't block it. My wife walked in, and she said, what's going on? Why is your phone ringing? I said, I turned the ringer off. It ain't going to ring. She goes, who is this? I said, I don't know. Didn't you hear it? Mm, mm. She grabbed it and said, hello, he's right here. <laughs> That's what wives are for. The lady on the phone said, please hold for the admiral. I said, the who? She said, please hold for the admiral. I said, well, I don't know nobody, admiral. And this dude got on the phone. He had the deepest voice I have ever heard. And he was like, hello. I was like, it's Barry White. What up, man? <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, he's, he said his name. He said, I'm an admiral. He says, I just wanted to spend a little moment with you and ask you if you could do something for me. I said, sir, how did you get my phone number? He said, you don't want to know. <laughs> and you know what that means? I don't want to know. <laughs> So I said, that's cool. That's fine. What do you need? He says, I train the most powerful fighting soldier on the face of the planet Earth. They're called SEALs. And I have 12 members, 10 men and two women, who are graduating in about three and a half weeks. I need you to come and let me surprise them and have you be their speaker at their graduation. And I said, how would that be a surprise? He goes, the other day, they had to jump out of a plane. Now, this, some of you might like this, but no, 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 no. He goes, in like nonchalant, the other day, they had to jump out of a plane at about 63,000 feet in the air. 63, that's double what airplanes fly. And he goes, they all have oxygen, everything's cool, but they don't know where they are in the world. And they have three days to get their way out of there and find the checkpoint. And they all did it, and they did it in record time. He said, but before they open the door to the back of the plane and jump out, they have to check their oxygen. So whoever the 12th soldier is, he looks at soldier 11, makes sure his air's on, hits him on the heaven, helmet, and the 12th soldier gets to make a call sign, whatever he wants to say. So the 12th soldier checked the air on the soldier 11, hit him on the helmet, and he said, I got your back. Everybody say, I got your back. <laughs> Touch your neighbor right now and say, I got your back. <laughs> Touch your other neighbor and say, I got your back. So number 11 did it to number 10 and said, I got your back. On and on and on and went. Number one went back to number 12, checked him and said, I got your back. So they're waiting. All of a sudden, there's like three lights, of course. So there are three lights, red, yellow, green. Green means go. So the yellow light flashed. The doors start coming down. They all have, have like inter intercoms. They're calm. They could talk to each other. So one soldier said, I've heard that before. I got your back. Why did you do that? And the other soldier says, too, when I was a kid growing up, this dude came to my school and spoke. He played the saxophone. His name was Reggie. All of a sudden, all 12 had seen me in school.
before they graduated high school, all 12. And he said, that's not a coincidence. And for you to have that kind of influence on my children, I want them to see you. I want you to congratulate them for what they do. I said, absolutely, I'm there. He said, do you need to check your calendar? I said, no, you know my phone number. You'll cancel whoever I have down anyway. <laughs> I'm just saying, all right? I don't want them to be canceled, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all government's probably nicer than mine, okay? <laughs> so I said, I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there. And so I got to do the graduation for a SEAL team. And I'm thinking, what, 12, 12 soldiers? What are you talking, 100, 200, 300, 7,000 people. I was like, good night. Everybody's there. It was unbelievable. I'm like, what the world? And when I walked out, they went nuts. And I did the whole thing. When I got done, the admiral says, what can I do for you? You name it. I said, I want to go to the room. Everybody touch your neighbor, say the room. <laughs> touch your other neighbor, say the room. <laughs> okay, now look, look, look. If you've never heard me before, you're probably starting to realize I'm a pretty good communicator. <laughs> because only 20% of what I do is in church. 80% of what I do is in the secular world. On Wednesday, I'll be on the AM show, all right? I'm the guest, about 710. You want to tune in? Me, I'm just helping the people out. That's all I'm going to do. And with, on every morning this week, I will be on the morning radio shows, the secular ones, the morning crew. I don't know what they're going to try to do to me, but I'm not going to fall for it this time, all right? Do you know, some of you are like, well, why do you do that? Because everybody needs a Christian in their life. Everybody needs that. My compassion for people is huge. Can I help you? Can I give you something? Don't ever, don't ever mix up your conviction with your compassion. My conviction started when I asked Jesus to be Lord of my life. Then I started reading the Bible and saying, I need to live like that. I need to do that. I need to do that. My compassion has nothing to do with my conviction except it's Jesus. The church a long time ago got those mixed up. Well, if people ain't like us, then we don't need to be around them. We were born to save the lost. We were born to love our neighbor as ourselves. It's when we get the conflict between our conviction and our compassion that we mess up what God intended us to do. I ain't got time to go into it. I just thought y'all should hear that because you got to understand, dude, every sinner needs Reggie. Because there's a day that, that, listen, can I just put it to you this way? Every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. My job is to make sure that sinner gets his future. Somebody say amen right there. Touch your neighbor and say, all right, all right, all right. Everybody say the room. One more time, say the room. Okay, here's the room. It's called the room to remember. Every seal who's died in battle, there's a room. It's probably half the size of this room. And it has on display the helmet clothes that they wore when they gave their life for the United States of America. And not a lot of people get to go in there. I just had to. And he went, I'll take you. He says, is there anything particular you're looking for? I said, yes, sir. He says, I know what it is. I'll take you there. We waited until after all the celebrations was over. Sun had already set. It's kind of eerie. Because when you walk in the room, it's pitch black. But the lights are all motion. So once you step in, lights start coming on. And they do it in stages. The very first light that comes on in this room to remember is a helmet that's half blown off. And there's a light shining right on top of it. You can see the inside of the helmet where the soldier had taken a knife and scraped in a poem. The poem was on a plaque in front of the helmet. And the poem said this. When you find yourself in darkness and you think it'll never end, someone strikes a match and hope comes in like a flood. I'm the match. <laughs> I was like, I could have went home right there. And I went, oh, that's cool. And I just wrote it down. He said, you want to go in the back in the middle. So I went in the back in the middle. Now, before I tell you what I wanted to see and what I did see, remember the scripture, all right? The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Remember that because we're going to come back to it. But let me give you another one. Psalms 56 verse 8. You record my misery and list my tears on your scroll. You have all of them in your book. Listen to this. 
You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each of them in your book. How about this version of the Bible? It says, you keep track of my every toss and turn through the sleepless nights. Each tear entered in your ledger so that you can remember them. Why would Jesus do that? Why would he catch every tear in a jar? Because he was reminding himself what he died for. Every heartache you've ever had, every disappointment you've ever gone through, he did that for you. And he wants you to know, if you ever read his book, why he did what he did. He loves you. And he gave his life for you. In the United States of America, I, I, I honor soldiers in every country to lay down your life for the freedom of your country. That's amazing. That's just a whole nother level of absolute heroism. It's not a movie where you can come back to life again. It's real men and women laying down their life for what they believe in in their country. It's amazing. So to walk in that room, I just really wanted to see a letter. My whole session with you tonight is about a letter. Let me tell you where it's from. There was a seal whose wife was seven months pregnant. He had to go on one last mission because he was the only one qualified to do what they needed done. It was only a week, just one week, just one week, and he'd be back home. But that night, he sat and watched his wife sleep, her being seven months pregnant. He pulled out a piece of paper and a pen, and he wrote a letter to his unborn son, not knowing that that would live forever because he never came home. He gave his life on that mission for his country. The soldiers who survived came back and gave the letter to his wife. She gave the original letter to the seals. And under glass it sit. I just believe tonight that we might can learn something. Something from this small letter. Is it all right if I read it to you? Well, I ain't got a choice. I already told you. Wouldn't it be great if I went, ah, never mind. Let's do something else. <laughs> Y'all get up and start throwing chairs at me or something. I'm just saying. Hey, hey, uh, who plays the keyboard? Come here, man. Come and, come and do something. Oh, he's so good? If the queen says you good, <laughs> little brother, you good. I just need a little letter reading music. Can you help me out with that, man? You ain't got no choice. I could have got you out of it, but she already spoke. You got this. You good. You good. Everybody touch your neighbor and say, here we go. Touch your other neighbor and say, you're going to be glad you came here tonight. All right, here we go. Letter. Oh, yeah, go ahead. You good. Here we go. Hey, let me look at, before I start reading, can I just say something? It's amazing what you can learn from someone else's life. Hey, did you know that everyone in this room has a story? And did you know that someone in the world needs to hear your story? The Bible says that they'll know who you are by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Your story. This morning I was in I was in Christchurch. Oh, it was cold. And I was in Christchurch, and when I got done, there's a man there, and I'm a golfer. I love golfing. I'll get to play tomorrow. I'm glad the queen has a birthday. I can play golf. And uh, he came up to me. He goes, sorry it rained yesterday. We didn't get to play golf. I said, I will play the next time. He goes, I just want to hug you again. I said, I'll never forget what you've done for me. And I said, all right, bro. I said, I'm your friend. You see, five years ago was the first time he came back to church in 10 years. He grew up in church helping with the youth group, but something happened, and it hurt him, and he left church. He was a good man, a great dad. Five years ago, his daughter came to him and says, Dad, why don't you play your saxophone anymore? And he said, I'm too old. And she said, Dad. There's a guy coming named Reggie Dabbs. 
And he says, I remember when you used to come. You used to do an event called Get Smart. It's the first time I ever saw you. It was about 15 years ago. It was one of the last events I was at when I quit church. And she says, Dad, he's going to be at, at church on Sunday. Just come with me, please, come with me. I want you to hear him play. He goes, you can't say no to your little girl. I said, okay, I'll come. He got saved that Sunday, five years ago. And he's been in church ever since, ever since. Do you know what? Everybody has a story. And about two weeks ago, he shared his story for the church. And they used it to promote me coming. And this morning, three men came to church because they heard him tell his story about me. And all three of those men this morning gave their life to Jesus Christ. Every story matters. Touch your neighbor and say, every story matters. So as I'm reading this story, I want to encourage somebody to just rise up because your story matters. I look at William, my intern. Oh, he's more than that. He's my older brother's son. And for him to want to intern with me is pretty cool. Cause he's my nephew. He good. All jet lag. He did pretty good. That's good. And he does love your cheese. He ate it all. All right. Are y'all ready? Let's do this. Hey, keep your mind open. Let it. Let, let God touch you through someone else's testimony. It starts by saying, "So live your life that the fear of death can never enter your heart." Oh, that's good. And always remember what the word fear means. You ready? F-E-A-R. He says, false expectations appearing real. In other words, fear is a lie. Fear is a lie. Trouble no one. Respect others and in return, they will respect you. Love your life. Perfect your life. Beautify the things in your life. Seek to make your life long and its purpose to serve the people around you. Prepare a noble death song for the day when you go over the great divide. Always give a word or a salute when meeting or passing a friend or even a stranger. Show respect to all and try your best not to fight with any. When you rise in the morning, give thanks for the food that you have and for the joy of living. And if you see no reason to give thanks, the fault lies only in yourself. I stopped right there. I literally stopped right and I went, okay, that's good. And the Admiral says, what part are you at? I said, oh, when you rise in the morning, give thanks for the food and for the joy of living. And if you see no reason to give thanks, the fault lies only in yourself. And he says, oh, I got it. I see why you like that. And just in case you haven't never heard me before, I grew up in foster care. My name's Reggie, all right? My last name is Dabs. I didn't get a last name until I was like 12, 14 years old because my mom gave me away to her favorite teacher at school because my mom said I was a mistake and she hated the day that I was born. It's worse. She kept my brother and my two sisters, but my mom gave me away. That hurts you, and it tore me up. But here's the deal. I can't blame it on my mom. Though she gave me away, I cannot. How can I hate somebody I don't even know? How can I give this life that I've been given away to someone I don't even know? You have to understand, once you start breathing, it's your turn. Once you start living, it's your turn. Once you start this thing, it's your turn. That's why sometimes you need something greater than you, stronger than you, more powerful to get you through these bad things. That's why the scripture we read is there. Be close to the brokenhearted and he heals those who are crushed in spirit that's what God does and this, this soldier had it I love what he said that the fault lies only in yourself watch this abuse no one and no thing for abuse turns a wise man into a fool and it robs the spirit of its vision hey can I ask you something what are you abusing today what are you abusing you gotta have a vision who you are and the only thing that can mess up a man's vision is sin. You got to do something. You got to take care of the in you so that you can be great on the outward you. Now it's about to get personal. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, here it is. Touch your other neighbor and say, here it is. Y'all quiet. You know what's really good? Everybody's like this. 
no one's moved. No one's gone to the bathroom. Everybody's like, it's a little different up in here tonight. Hey, it's okay to be different, isn't it? It's okay, isn't it? Because, dude, I'm going to tell you right now, watch this. It says, when it comes your time to die, do not be like those whose hearts are filled with fear of death, so that when their time comes, they weep and pray for a little more time to live their lives again in a different way. I got to give that to you again because some of y'all didn't get it. It says, when it comes your turn to die, your time to die, do not be like those who beg and pray for another day to live their life in a different way. Instead, sing your song. Sing your death song. And I'll sing you to the other side. That was it. I read that and I'm like, oh my goodness. And he goes, the admiral goes, you want to meet the boy? I said, yes. You want to meet the wife? I said, absolutely. He said, tomorrow morning before you leave, I'll take you. I've already told her you were here. I texted her just now. She knows who you are. She knows what you do for young people. Hey, can I let y'all in on a secret? On Wednesday night, I'm at Meg's, the, the boys who are boarding at Meg's. I'm doing a session with them, and I'm going to do this story. Because every boy at Meg's needs to see who they are. They need to decide while they're in school what kind of man they're going to be. And on Wednesday night, we're going to take a little, just close, a little step closer to being the man they could be. I'm not able to say Jesus. But just because I can't say his name don't mean he ain't going to show up. Somebody say, all right, all right, all right. Like he's here tonight. Hey, can I ask you a question? How you living? Or better yet, can I ask you this? How you dying? catches every tear in a jar why don't you just give him your sorrow give him your hurt give him the day that you wish it never happened in every school I start I say this I say to every kid you ever have something happen in your past you wish you could forget but you know you can <laughs> then I say this anybody ever wake up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning you're wide awake and every time you close your eyes to go back to sleep it's like a movie in your head from something in your past you wish you could forget then you need something bigger than you You need something stronger than what you're going through. You need something stronger than what happened yesterday. And I'm here to tell you his name's Jesus. His name's Jesus. Because he's close to the brokenhearted. And he heals those who are crushed in spirit. That's the two people I'm talking to. You can be brokenhearted and be saved. Because life happens, you know. But nothing should crush you except sin. So I want to talk to the brokenhearted. It's not working out the way you thought it would. Life ain't going the way you expected. It's a little more difficult than you think. Maybe you look at yourself and you say, I have nothing to give thanks for. I asked Jesus to be my Savior, and instead of stuff getting better, it gets worse. Anybody remember the day you got saved and it got worse after that? Clap your hands if you know what I'm talking about. See, you're not alone. You're not alone. Sometimes it get worse. But you know what's the cool thing about it? It might get worse around you, but you're like, okay, I can handle this because of who's with you. It's who's with you, and his name's Jesus. Is he with you tonight? So I don't know what you're carrying. I don't know what the luggage is you pulled into church tonight. Why don't you leave it here and let Jesus handle it?